when you have a bag it's not just the bag it's the marketing of that bag it's working with influencers to market it it's your rent in shops by doing that video by lifting the lid by sharing the information that i found i will probably never work with dior a day again not that i ever did in the first place but you know that's how it goes hey everyone well a lot has gone on recently in the luxury community things that i've spoken about for the last couple of months i would say actually from lots of people selling um all or part of their bag collections to luxury scandals and it it got me thinking because my stance on luxury has actually changed since all of this has been going on and i want to explain that and i want to really talk about have luxury scandals past present future have they changed your opinion on luxury and crucially have they affected your decision to go and buy luxury so think about it luxury scandals let's say you save 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 you're working hard you're saving up and you finally hit that milestone in your savings where you can go and buy that dream bag that bag that you have had your eye on for however long and then things like Dior happen with, you know, with everything that went on there. And you could be left with a bag or a piece of clothing or an accessory, a belt, anything, something that is uncouth to be seen wearing or something that from an ethic, from your own ethical point of view, you might not feel comfortable wearing. And then what happens from that, you have something that would once have had an intrinsic value and now that value has decreased because it, you only have to look at Balenciaga. They screwed up massively. Don't even get me started on why they did that campaign. It was gross and how it got through and just all of it is, that's a whole other video. But if you look at that brand, they already didn't really hold their value in the first place and they were a brand that you could always get like a coupon code on. But now, good luck selling anything Balenciaga secondhand. And you know, I talk a lot on here about what I call investment bags. And I think there's controversy over in an investment bag because a lot of you say to me, a bag can't be an investment. It actually can, but it depends on the brand. It depends on the bag. And it depends on whether there has been a controversy. So if we start with Dior and what went on there, I have had so many of you in the comments and on emails writing to me saying I was saving up for a Lady Dior, let's say, and I've decided that I don't, I don't wanna go and buy that anymore. And I can understand why. Because I am a massive Dior fan. I, if I'm gonna be honest, I'm very disappointed in them. I have got, uh, I'm disappointed in, in what they've been up to with that particular factory, which is alleged, of course. But I'm also disappointed because it, like to put it blank, like blatantly, I've also got a, a big Dior collection and I don't feel comfortable wearing it. And it's kind of like, what do I do with it? Uh, such as I have a lot of their jumpers, light knitwear, perfect for summer. And the other day I, I thought, I forgot about it for a brief second. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna go and grab that Dior jumper that doesn't have any sleeves on it. Cause it's perfect for this kind of weather. And I pulled it out of the wardrobe and I was like, oh, it's got a big logo across the front. Don't get me wrong, I love it. I love it, but my, viewpoint on this has changed by doing that video by lifting the lid by sharing the information that i found i will probably never work with dior a day again not that i ever did in the first place but you know that's how it goes but to get back to it how has it how has all of these scandals balenciaga dior um a lot of you told me uh, tell me about scandals to do with chanel from like wartime you know all of this stuff, how does it make me feel? In recent months, but definitely in the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking not twice about buying luxury, kind of like three, four or five times about buying it, 
because I've been stung with Dior now. I've been stung with Balenciaga. And when I say that, I mean, I have gorgeous pieces from both brands and I don't feel that I can wear either of like any of those pieces. And also, probably not so with Dior because I do feel that Balenciaga um, have been more damaged because it's kids than Dior. I am literally speaking to people about Dior and, and whilst a lot of people are saying I'm not going to buy from there ever again, a lot of people are saying I'm going to turn a blind eye to it and I'm going to carry on wearing my stuff. And I think there are two ends of the spectrum on this. So I'm, I've slowed down buying. I'd already slowed back down buying because I want to put my money into experiences. I'm really enjoying dinners out with my husband, with friends, you know, um, going to nice restaurants, trying different foods, traveling. Um, we've got a really big trip coming up towards like in autumn time of this year, which I'm so excited for. And I'll tell you all about it very soon. It's going to be a month holiday which I need. I don't know how I'm gonna fit it in around work, but it's gonna be a month's holiday. So I'm looking at luxury differently. I feel as well that you could end up buying something, there's a scandal, and then you can't sell it. Or if you can sell it, people are gonna offer you ridiculously cheap money because they know how many people want a bag by Balenciaga right now. Not that many people. I tell you another really big reason for me why I am looking at luxury differently. When it came out, like I'm not, I'm not stupid, you know, I, I realize and we all do realize that the cost price of these designer items are like nothing compared to what they're selling them for. You take the Prada re-edition, that is a nylon little bag that is, Kate Spade makes a better quality version of that bag, if you ask me. I've I've bought the Kate Spade version and it's more robust and it holds its shape better. That Prada one feels cheap and flimsy. And if you took the Prada, Prada logo off it, would you buy it? Now, if you ask me, that Prada re-edition, I would be surprised if the book tote from Dior costs 53 euros to make. Don't tell me that Prada re-edition costs any more than 30, 30 euros to make. Probably even less than that because the materials in it are so cheap. Knowing now, having the lid lifted on how much this stuff actually costs these brands has massively put me off buying them. I look at something that's 5,000 pounds and I'm like, no. I now know that costs you under a thousand pounds to make that and you're wanting probably under 500 pounds and you're wanting 5K. Now I do realize that when you have a bag, it's not just the bag, it's the marketing of that bag. It's working with influencers to market it. It's your rent in shops. It's paying all of your salespeople. It's everything. There are so many different costs that have to come out of that each bag that is made. But still, once the lid, lid was lifted on actually how much that bag was, it put me off. So what should you do if you are watching this saying, okay, yeah, I take on board what you're saying, but I still want the bag, what should I do? Um, you might be surprised to know that I would say, if you want a certain bag and you want to roll the dice with scandals, you know, buy a bag from wherever and find out in a couple of years time that they've done something and then you've got something you don't really want to use. That could happen with any and all of these brands, any of them. So if you are a luxury addict, if, whether you are buying your first bag or your millionth bag, I would say don't not do it. If it's, if it's a passion for you, if it's gonna mark a significant point in your life, you might be really surprised to hear this, I've not stopped buying luxury. I've slowed down and I think a million times before buying it now um, and I'm off buying the super thousands of pounds bag. I'm, I'm off that, but I'm still buying it. So I wouldn't say don't do it. If it's, if it's your passion, if it's something you want, I would still say go for it. Um, like who knew, who would have guessed that it would have been Dior that did this? Out of all of the brands going, they would be the last on my list for this. So it goes to show, even if you pick 
a very clean as a whistle brand it could still happen to them but i i wouldn't say to if if you really want it i wouldn't say not do it because i'm still doing it but i am thinking multiple times before i drop the money and then the other thing you can think to do the final point that you can think to do is to look pre-loved I would say anyway a lot of vintage pieces were better made back in the day and you would assume and hope that the working conditions of the staff back then was a load better than it is now where lots of people are being exploited and used um, and and worn into the ground to make these things so I would I would definitely say look at vintage you can get some really nice vintage pieces and you don't have to buy vintage pieces that look really, really worn out. I did a live stream with Luxury Promise a couple of days ago now. And on the live stream, I was actually surprised. They were showing bags, like they had an Hermes Kelly from 1969. And it, if you told me that it was from last year, I'd believe you because it was in like a brand new condition. And I was very, very shocked at that. They also had Chanel bags that looked freshly new and they weren't, they were from the nineties. And when I say freshly new, I mean quite clearly someone had bought them and never used them. The, the puffiness of the quilting was still there. It hadn't gone flat. The caviar was perfect. The corners on the bags were, it was just unused. And I was really surprised by that. So when you think about vintage, don't assume something dusty, something that smells, something you don't really want to be seen with. You can, if you spend a little bit more on, on vintage, which is still going to be less than buying new, you can actually get some really good stuff. So do consider vintage. So that is everything. Uh, do potential luxury scandals put you off buying? Has it put you off buying? Were you saving for a certain bag and then all this Dior stuff came out and you're like, no, I'm, I'm nervous about spending all those thousands of pounds now. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.